Good morning and welcome to Learn for Life News on the 6th of November 2012. This news is personally vetted and chosen by me. It's not a bot. It's taken off the interwebs from various sources and I thought it might be of interest to practicing teachers. The idea behind the whole uh, news broadcast in the mornings is that practicing teachers who may be in their classroom listening to this podcast may have a little time, just a couple of minutes for reflection and they will be able to come back later and link to all the different resources that are online. The resources online are a video, an audio podcast, a liquorize booklet and a link bunch. So don't worry if you've missed a resource and you want to go back, just go to Learn for Life, L for L, that's L four number four l dot co dot uk for the various broadcasts and you can hear the audio or pick up the resources or the link bunch from there we'll also be twittering out every morning and uh, you'll be able to get and see these resources in different areas right the first first uh, bunch of uh, resources that might be of use to people and these are specific things that you might find of interest in your classroom. The first one is about iPads. The first three items, um, iPad TeachMeet. If you don't know what a TeachMeet is, go along to your favorite search engine and put in one word, yes, one word, TeachMeet, and you'll see what that is. Basically, it's a social gathering in the evening of teachers to share resources in a physical space. A lot of people use Twitter to talk about ideas and then meet up. This one is run by Anthony Evans, Skinny Boy Evans, at Skinny Boy Evans, and this is going to be at the St. Aidan's Primary School, Redbridge, North East London, and it's on the 8th of November, two days' time, Thursday the 8th of November, from 7 till 10. And the hashtag, which you will find on Twitter, and if you don't know what that is, ask someone, the hashtag is TMIPAD. Go along Look up the Teach Me page. All the links will be at the end of the broadcast. So go along, learn about certain people talking about their different uses of iPads. Mary Farmer will be there talking about something encouraging, inspiring and motivating to do with EBD. Um, And a number of other people showing exemplars of use of iPads in their classroom. Okay, the second resource for iPads is Joe Badge's article over at the Rising Stars sites, which is risingstars-uk.com. And she talks about one iPad, 36 children, 36 children, Joe, my goodness. Um, And uh, she has 36 year four children and her own iPad. And she wanted to link her iPad to the whiteboard, but she didn't want to do it through a cable. It's all a bit fiddly. So she set up or used a wireless solution. So go along and have a look at that. Um, It's a really interesting resource. Third iPad resource this morning that you might find of interest is the BCS, the British Computer Society Chartered Institute for IT. And they've got an app. Hasn't everyone got an app? This one's called Kickstart for iPad, not Kickstarter, which is the um, website where they get you to give money for good ideas. This is called Kickstart, K-I-K Start for iPad. And it's uh, $4.99, which is quite expensive. But uh, this app also gives you a certificate and it shows you how to set up and to optimize your iPad. So it could be quite useful for people who are new to the whole concepts of how to use iPads. Very interesting little resource. So those three resources, Teach Me iPad, go along on the 8th, join other people. Uh, Joe Badge's uh, iPad, how to connect it wirelessly, one iPad to your whiteboard, and the kickstart for BCS. Okay, Uh, as a distraction this morning or this evening or whenever you're listening to this podcast, you might like to go along to YouTube and see... G.P. Gray, I can never get his initials right, see G.P. Gray's latest uh, video on Digital Aristotle. He's gone over to the States and he's had a great time with a lot of people and he's come back with a couple of videos that he's pushing out about education. One of them is talking about Digital Aristotle and the way the interwebs might go with teachers in the future using devices and knowledge. I don't quite agree with him, but it's quite an interesting little uh, video nevertheless. Only a couple of minutes. Go along and have a look that up on, on the internet. Okay, the next lovely blog that you need to go to is Jose Picardo's blog at, over at www.josepicardo.com. 
And it's called One Learning Environment. And what's interesting about this uh, particular blog is that Jose links Vygotsky to uh, social media. And it's a short one page blog, which I suggest you have a read of and reflect on. Really, really interesting points he makes in that blog. Okay, next resource, because we've got to move on because you're busy teachers and you are very short for time is the teaching and learning in the global classroom in tandem with the British Council and the e-twinning people. There's a group of articles over at The Guardian, over at the Teacher Network series, looking at different global classroom uh, exemplars. So the role of technology in the global classroom, uh, exploring other countries and cultures, school exchange story, why global awareness matters, why I became a teacher to help ask critical questions about the world, global awareness and schools live chat. So you can see all of those if you go over to The Guardian and explore that very interesting whole global teacher network. Now, looking at uh, the interwebs and particularly looking at uh, <laughs> uh, Twitter, I came across a little conversation between um, Zoe Ross 19 and O Lottie, exclamation mark, and they were talking about uh, a very interesting idea that uh, O Lottie had to do with taking Evernote, which is that app on your phone or iPad or whatever, and using it to get uh, evidence for the new teaching standards in schools. And as they were talking about that, um, up came at Teaching Sci and gave them an exemplar blog of collecting evidence using Google Docs and Evernote, how to build up a CPD record, which you could share with others, and how to do it, uh, sort of very sort of uh, basic way of capturing all the things you've done and the evidence for it. Um, as at Teaching Sci, which is E&H, I don't know his real name, has said, you know, you need a master's level um, process for this. And uh, teachers are pulling this stuff together in terms of uh, using technologies. So that could be very useful for anyone who's an NQT or uh, Teach First or whatever. Go along and have a look at that. Right. All these links are in on the Learn for Life site, which is http colon forward slash forward slash L four. That's number four. L dot co dot UK. Um, everything is in a link bunch in a Liquorize page. So if you click on it, you'll get all the links coming up. Um, now, to end with, to give you a little bit of inspiration and a bit of a morale boost, maybe uh, or maybe not, this spot is usually devoted to Michael Gove, our beloved leader, and some of the things he might not have got entirely right. Uh, this one is uh, an article um, actually in The Independent talking about uh, the lack of morale at the DFE itself. Uh, people aren't particularly happy about what's going on there and the policies. What is quite interesting is uh, they did a poll among the staff and the four out of five civil servants in the department didn't believe changes were introduced for the better. So I will leave you with that thought and how our beloved leader is actually uh, influencing his own department of civil servants and let you get on with your day. Hope you've enjoyed this news and please listen again. Don't forget to tune in to us on a daily basis from next week. Bye now.